Thank you very much. Hi, you guys. Um, I am a paleontologist. Everybody say paleontologist. Paleontologist. One thing that a lot of people don't know, there are different kinds of paleontologists. Right now, they're drilling into the crater that the big um, asteroid made. Hold your questions to the end if you don't mind. That the big meteorite made that killed the dinosaur. Those guys who look at those mud samples are micro paleontologists. I'm just the type that you think of. I'm the type of guy who sets up his tent middle of nowhere and we go looking for a bone. We don't dig a hole and hope to find one. We look for one sticking up. When we find it, we use the paintbrush and pick. We pour super glue on it to make it really hard. And then we wrap it up in a cast like a broken arm. Underneath that one, sometimes I find a second one. If it's a really good day, we find a third one. Once I have all these guys in my truck, my job is over. I take them to a museum and a different type a paleontologist, a preparer, takes them out of the jackets, cleans them up really well, mounts them on a big metal frame, so that when you and I go to a museum, we have an excellent idea of what a dinosaur looks like. So different paleontologists are doing different things, but we're all trying to get a better understanding of these animals from our past. Now I have some fossils with me today. These two guys are ammonites. Everybody say ammonite. ammonite. They lived in the ocean when the dinosaurs were on land. They became extinct when the dinosaurs died. We don't know exactly why, but um, they were hollow. Little squid guy lived inside. But 400 years ago, they found them really high up on top of mountains. And back then, people didn't know that land can move. Does anybody know what the biggest mountain in the world is today? Say it. Mount, Mount Everest. Mount Everest started underwater, and it got pushed up to where it is today. They didn't know that back then. So the smartest man in England writes a paper, and he says, it's obvious to me when a snake climbs high on a mountain, it will curl up turn to stone, and mysteriously, its head explodes. Seriously? Is that what happens to snakes? No. no. This same English scientist said Iceland will never defeat England in a soccer tournament. Oh, we also find these. This came from outer space. In outer space, we call this a meteoroid. Everyone say meteoroid. Meteoroid. Hey, do you guys, do you guys want to come up? There's some room over here if you want to come over here. No? Okay. Meteoroid. When it's burning up, we call it a meteor, everybody. Meteor. When it lands on the ground, it's a meteor, right? Meteor. If you get hit in the head by one, you are meteor wrong. We think one of these guys is what killed the dinosaurs um, 65 million years ago. When we're out looking for dinosaurs, we find a lot of this stuff. This used to be sap on a tree. It falls down from the tree, it dries out. Now we call it amber. Everybody say amber. Amber. Inside of this piece of amber, I have a bug, a fly. After the show, if you'd like to see it, I will show it to you. But there's a fly in there, and this fly is two million years old. Yesterday night, I was in Ocean City, New Jersey, and somebody there asked me, is it dead? <laughs> it is this dead. is the horn of a Triceratops. And this is the one down on his nose, not the big ones up on his head. But if you look on the inside, you will see holes. When this guy was alive, he made blood inside of his horn because his horn is made out of bone. That's where we make our blood, inside of our bones. Do you guys know what a rhinoceros is? Yeah. It has horns on its head, but its horns are made out of keratin. The same stuff as your nails or your hair. When you cut your hair, does it bleed? No. no. And if it does, you really should change salons. But if you cut the horn of a triceratops, it would bleed a lot because he's making blood right inside. Guys, I have one more thing to show you, but it is super gross, and I know some people may have had dinner. So why don't we skip the gross thing, okay? No, and what we could do instead, what we could do instead is talk about rezoning a professional square footage in Sunderland. Who wants to talk about rezoning in town? Okay, you'll work the rest of your life. Who wants to see the gross thing? 
pants down. I will show you the gross thing. But when I do, you will make a gross noise and then get absolutely quiet so I can explain why I brought it. Is that fair? Yeah. So on the count of three, gross noise and quiet for practice. Here we go. One, two, three. That was great. This is real. This is the oldest fossil I have with me today. It is a 100 million year old specimen of dinosaur poop. Don't worry, don't worry, we are not gonna pass this around. Do you know why? It's been passed once already. But if we cut this open and we polish it and we look at it with a microscope, we can tell exactly what that dinosaur ate. If we know what the dinosaur ate and how much is there, we calculate the calories. If we know how big the animal is, then we know how much energy they need during the day. This tells us more about the life of a dinosaur than any other fossil we find. Now today we'll be using my explosive learning system. How many people here have seen my infomercial? 4.30 a.m. right after P90X, by the tapes. But for the rest of you, let's say we're talking about the migratory eating habits of the warthog. Well, we're all gonna go, boom, la, 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 boom, la, la, la. Let's try it, shall we? Here we go, and That wasn't, you were actually great, man. Um, but we're not here to learn about warthogs. We are here to understand dinosaurs. And to know when dinosaurs were on the earth, we have to know how long the earth has been around. So without further ado, I need a really big boom lagger lagger from you. Here we go. And that wasn't bad, but make sure you use the arms every time. Because the more you make this motion, the closer you are to becoming the next governor of California. And that is true. Go family values. Now, the Earth is about 4.5, 4.6 billion years old. We know that because of carbon and argon dating. I didn't think they liked each other, but if you get a book out of the library on the Earth's first billion years, you're going to find it was a different place. You would say the Earth during the first billion years was on fire. 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 The book was getting hot. Thank you. Um, yes, it was on fire. It was a big spinning ball of this stuff called magma. Everybody say magma. Magma looks just like lava, but the difference is lava has touched the air, magma has not. And air today protects us. If a big rock from outer space tries to hit us, it rubs against the air molecules. Everybody, rub your hands together. And on the count of three, we're going to put them on our face and feel how warm they get. Here we go, really hard. One, two, three. That is called mechanical friction. And when a rock tries to hit us from outer space, it rubs against the air molecules, burns up a shooting star. We are protected. Oh, by the way, mechanical friction is everywhere. The threads of your clothing are held together by it. Without mechanical friction, this would look like a Lady Gaga concert. But back then, no mechanical friction. So things from outer space, like asteroids, meteoroids, Comets would constantly bombard the surface of our planet. It was a violent, inhospitable place. Nothing could survive. And I need a volunteer to demonstrate that. How about you, Mitch? Sure, come on. You're, you're happy? Come on. Yes, you. Yes. Perfect. What is your name? Taylor. Taylor, I'm Dino Man. And I'll be beating you around the head this evening. Now, in order... To protect those ears, we have to pop these on. So I want you to look right here. I'm going to put them on just like... Is that actually top? All right, Taylor, okay. Now, this is going to represent the surface of our planet during the first billion years. Now, hold on to that, Taylor, with both your hands, right? And like my dad would say to me, good. Keep those fingers low. I just want to hit your head. Nice. Now, the Earth during the first billion years was an incredibly hot place. A big spinning ball of that magma. But remember, magma, no atmosphere, no protection. So things from outer space like asteroids, meteoroids, comets would constantly bombard the surface of our planet. 
Okay. Your job now is just to look straight ahead. And whatever you do, don't flinch, okay? It's the reason I can't go back to Brattleboro. Okay. Dramatic interpretation of the earth during the first billion years. As you can see, nothing can survive on our earth during the first billion years. Oh, telepathically, Taylor has just informed me she'd like to do her impersonation of her favorite Martian. <laughs> Big round of applause for the super brave, Miss Taylor. Pull those off. Put one hand on your stomach, please. One hand on your stomach, one hand on your back, bend forward. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you. Now that was the first billion years. The next three billion years, a miracle happens. For the very first time, the oceans fill up with water. And if you looked into that water with a microscope, you would see the first living things, and they would look like my lunch. Yeah. Egg salad sandwich inside a plastic bag. A nucleus inside a membrane. A single celled animal. Everyone say single celled animal. These guys just float around. They don't walk like us. They can't talk like us. We walk and talk because we are not made out of one cell. We are made out of trillions of cells. Some dinosaurs are much bigger than us. They have more cells. So we have to go way back in time. And I have a prop to show you. So let me just grab that really. I left it in the corner. Dang it. And we can't stop. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to use your guys' imagination. Oh, we'll use your imaginations in my laundry. I never had a chance to wash it, so if it gets dirty, I don't care. But together with your imagination, my laundry, we are all going to go back to the time. I'm not going to touch that. Are there two young people who do not understand our legal system? Would you like to come up, miss? Yeah, sure, come right up here, that'd be great. And a boy? Is there a boy? How about sir? You, you worked your way through the crowd here. Fantastic. Come on, it's okay. It's good. Now, what is your name? Oh, are you guys brothers and sisters? I didn't even look at that. What are the odds? I should go to Foxwoods. I'll see you later. Okay, what is your name? Okay, all right, here, let me just pop that on you. That's perfect. Nice job. And your name, what's your name? Evan. Oh, here we go. Caitlin and Evan, you guys could have like a morning program. Okay. Caitlin, Caitlin, Caitlin. Dino Man's program. Knock it off. It's not funny. Stop it. Okay, stop. All right, now, Caitlin, I need you to grab this handle and you have to walk that way. Yes. You're doing an excellent job. Can you guys back up just a little bit there? Sir? Thank you. Keep going, Caitlin. You might want to look where you're going. Okay. Here we go, sir. I need you to grab this handle and walk in the opposite direction. Grab the handle, that's a sweater. You want the handle, the handle right there. That's a doll, there's the handle, the doll handle conundrum. It kept me in third grade for three years, best time of my life. Now, I call this my clothesline old time. And it represents the history of the earth. We have divided that history into things called eras. Everybody say era. era. And the first era was the Precambrian. Everybody, Precambrian. Pre that was that big flaming ball that was Taylor's head. Those single-celled guys that looked like my lunch. Well, pretty soon they start to evolve. Two-celled, four-celled, eight-celled, 16-celled. And as animals get bigger and bigger, the Paleozoic, Paleozoic. era begins. That's where we find these guys. Hundreds of eyes, hundreds of legs. We don't even know how they moved because they're not here. They're extinct. Oh, what is this? Looks, <laughs> I know, OJ's Bronco. No, this is a jelly, a jelly. All the jellies got started 600 million years ago, but then a very brave creature with four legs, a head and a tail. Hello, I'm a very brave tetrapod, hi. Crawls out of the ocean onto the land, the first big animal to do it. And when it does, it ushers in the Mesozoic Era. Everyone, Mesozoic. 
the time of the dinosaurs. That's where we find the two-legged meat eaters, the bipedal carnivores. That's where we find these long-necked sauropods. But right here, 65 million years ago, these big guys become extinct. Now, when they die, did everything die? No. Animals that weighed under 100 pounds had a really good chance at survival. And it's the reason I'm on that South Beach thing right now. Now, when the dinosaurs leave, the mammals take over in the Cenozoic. That's where we find the woolly mammoth. That's why we have millions of stirrup pants that Gap made and Old Navy now handles. And we have you, sir. How old are you? Five and a half. Okay, the math will be difficult. Five and a half. Let's say every inch on this closed line of time equals one million years. He is five and a half. That means he's been alive according to the closed line O time, approximately one ninetieth the width of my hair. Fractions at the library show. It gets no better. And the reason I wanted to show you, no matter what we see on TV, no matter what we see in the movies, are there any big dinosaurs alive right now? No. No. Let's give our volunteers a big round of applause. I'll take that mask from you, sir, and you can go have a seat. Thank you so much. The brother and sister pair, you were fantastic. Thank you. Now, I am making a little bit of a mess, you guys. So I'm going to do a real fast cleanup just to get things back in order. Now, a lot of people say, hey, Dino Man, why do the dinosaurs look so different? Why do we have big ones? We have small ones. We have some with hundreds of teeth. There are some dinosaurs with no teeth at all. We think it has a lot to do with how the land moves. The land where you're on, right here, is moving. It moves about as fast as your nails grow. Maybe an inch, two inches every year. Earthquake a little faster. But over time, let's say, somebody over here just asked me if I'm a pop. And I don't like to get personal, but I do have three lovely daughters. I do have a son, Benji, who looks like an orangutan, and at night he is frightening. But on Father's Day, we'll all go down to the river. What? Oh! Why didn't you say something? We're too busy talking. Can you help me, miss? Thank you for not yelling stranger danger. Here, can you put both your hands right here on the balloon? And put, no, put it right next to one here and put the other one right there. Nice. Now, when the dinosaurs first show up on the earth, all the land is pushed into one giant island called Pangea. Everybody. Pangea. Reunite Pangea. But that's impossible. Because some of Pangea moves to the south and some of Pangea moves up there to the north. And the dinosaurs on those two islands start to look different from one another. Then the continents form. Yes, continents form. Some continents have vegetation, other continents not so much. And the dinosaurs have to adapt to where they live. That is why we think they look so different. Let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you very much. You may have a seat. Oh, dinosaur eggs. A lot of people think dinosaurs are huge, their eggs will be huge, but that's not the case. If an egg ever got this big, the shell would be so thick, air couldn't get in, the baby wouldn't be strong enough to peck his way out. Most dinosaur eggs look like potatoes, long and thin, because dinosaurs have backs that don't like to bend. And this is the part of the show where I have to put my balloon to sleep, so if you could just give me a second. Now, the next question. How do we know about this stuff? Do scientists just make it all up? No. Now, when I'm in Kansas, they say yes right there. We all go home early. But here, we know about something called fossils. And I think fossils deserve a really big boom laga laga. Are we ready? Here we go. And boom laga laga. Oh, no, no. I'm so, so, I'm sorry. You guys did a great job. That was my fault. I told you to do it at exactly the wrong time. This is unfortunately the part of the show where I have to bring out my pet raccoon. Now, he started doing the show when he was two. It was a lot of fun. Now he is 23 years old. That's not so old to us, but to a raccoon, that's like 310 in raccoon years. So if everybody can be really quiet, you guys have been very good, thank you. Plus. 
For any reason, if this raccoon happens to get away from the dino man during the performance, his legal counsel suggests you all play dead. Thank you. Now, before I bring him out, why don't I explain what a fossil is? And I think I can do it best with a couple of balloons. First, I want to talk about why most animals never turn into a fossil. And that's because when a dinosaur dies, it is usually not covered by anything. <laughs> so other dinosaurs, insects, tiny things, microorganisms all start to eat it up. <laughs> Next, the weather works on it. It freezes and thaws, breaks into pieces. Rain and wind push those pieces around. And in a very short amount of time, this animal will turn into dirt. I am about to pop this balloon. If you don't like loud noises, cover your ears. And this is rarely rare, but it does happen. Sometimes when a dinosaur dies, it is covered by something. Maybe mud in a mud site. Maybe sand covers it from a sandstorm. Maybe it falls underwater. That works great. That way their animals and insects don't have such a good chance to eat it all up. Next, the dirt piles up higher and higher and higher. And a little bit of water does work its way through, but in that water are tiny little rocks, so small you need a microscope to see them. But every time the water washes away a piece of the animal, those rocks fill up the hole. Soon the whole animal is washed away, replaced by the rocks. The dirt around it holds it in shape. And if it gets all glued together, it has a really good chance of turning into a fossil. Just like this pin going through the balloon. When it went in, it took away some rubber, plugged up the hole with the metal. Same thing when it came out the other side. That is exactly what happens to a fossil, but instead of pins, they're rocks, they all get glued together, and if it all goes well, it will turn in to a fossil. I am about to pop this balloon. I am now going to attempt to do this with my pet raccoon. And I do want to say right up front, this is the one portion of the show where adults may begin to cry. If you see an adult crying, would you please tell them my raccoon is not real. He is not real. But he is going to jump out of his cage with a tremendous amount of violence and velocity. So much so, I will have to use this camp chair to beat him off of my neck. I will put him into the briefcase. I will turn him into a fossil. We'll all be happier, but then he will eat potato chips. Yeah. All right. Guys, real quiet. This is the first time in June that I'm gonna to attempt to do this without a net. And that's because she got a bedazzler for her birthday a couple weeks ago. I have not seen her since. I guess they're very addictive, habit forming. It's being reclassified as a gateway craft. Little heads up. These are nice people. You are going to be nice. I am going to be nice. Everybody in this room is going to be very well be <laughs> Everybody say hi. You can say hi to the raccoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Am I bleeding? No. Okay, okay. Three, three words to take out of the next library program. Now, my raccoon is going to a place with seven bungee cords, making us all happy. The first thing that's going to happen, if he is going to turn into a fossil, he must be covered by something. I'm covering him today with sand. Don't worry about the raccoon. I put a big straw up his nose. Next, water has to come down, and that water carries with the tiny little rocks. Have you guys ever held a glass of water up to a window at home and seen little rocks in there? Good, because if you do, get that water checked right away. But if you look in there with a microscope, you would see these rocks. We call them minerals. Have you guys ever heard of vitamins and minerals? Yes! 
We need to have them for, um, to keep us healthy. I'm using milk for two reasons. Number one, milk has a lot more minerals. It will speed everything up. And number two, I do come from the dairy producing state of Vermont and anything to help the dairy cause by cheese. I am now pouring the milk onto the raccoon. It's washing away little parts of his body. But every time it does, it fills up those holes. Oh, this looks really good. This looks horribly awkward. But soon the animal is washed away. Nothing but rocks out of nature, dirt piles up. I don't have enough dirt, I have to use my hands. But if everything goes exactly right, in a couple million years, this raccoon has an excellent chance to turn it into a fossil. No, I know. This is just a plastic prop to further the action of the drama. Now, that normally takes millions of years. And for the people who were concerned, was my raccoon alive? No. No, not since the very first show. But I'm still going to give him his favorite treat, which are potato chips. If you guys could give him a big round of applause. Here we go. You get one. Don't bite me, that wasn't nice. Now the people who dig this up, I said it earlier, are known as paleontologists. Paleontologists go out into the world to get a better understanding. <laughs> In order, that we can all sleep well tonight. I want to point out my raccoon is not real. He is what we call a spring toy. Um, he's a spring with fur. If you push on the spring, he gets smaller. If you pull on it, he moves. If you're thinking about making one, there's a whole bunch of free fur right up on Route 5. I saw it earlier. Um, did anybody see this bag move? And this is called a bumble ball. They used to make bigger bumble balls for kids, but now they only make this size for dogs. I think that explains an awful lot about my own children's orthodontia needs. And if I'm not trying to come up with that payment, I like to read about other scientists. My favorite in the world is a girl named Mary Anning. Everybody say Mary Anning. Mary Anning. Have you ever heard of the nursery rhyme, She Sells Seashells by the Seashore? That was written about Mary Annie. But when she was tiny, she's running home with her babysitter. Big rainstorm. All of a sudden, bam! They are both struck by lightning. They go to the hospital. Mary comes out two months later. And physically, she's OK. But she's really nervous it's going to happen again. And when Mary got nervous, she asked questions. She asked her dad about all the weird rocks around the house. Dad explains everything he knows. But when Mary is 10, her dad gets so sick, he goes to the hospital. Mary's mom doesn't have a job. Mary's a little girl, she has no money. They have no way of buying food. So they put a little table out where people would swim. They put a few fossils out there because she didn't think uh, anybody would really buy them. But when the swimmers come down, bam, they bought them all. She ran home, she got some more. She put those out there, bam, those were gone. In two days, she sells every fossil she'd ever collected. So if she still wanted to make money, she'd have to go out on the beach with her shovel early in the morning. And this one Monday, after hundreds of kids had played on the beach on the weekend, she looks into a hillside, sees something weird sticking out. Because she asked questions, she knew that was different. She grabs her shovel, runs to the top, and she starts to dig. She digs all Monday morning, all Monday afternoon, all through the night. She doesn't even go to bed. And when the sun comes up on Tuesday morning, the first and still the biggest of its type, ichthyosaur, a huge reptile fish is in the sand before her. She finds it when she is 12. And she doesn't stop. She finds so many things. College professors would come and ask the little girl how she did it, including the man who taught the boy who found the first one of these. This is a skull of a Tyrannosaurus Rex so if it was four so years small. old. If this went to your school, it would have to eat one student a day <laughs> to stay healthy. I know that's gross, but perhaps this was the only way we were ever going to financially fulfill no child left behind. <laughs> this is the tooth. 
than the claw of giant meat-eating dinosaurs. This is the tooth of a T-Rex, but it's only the part that hangs out of the mouth. If it was up into the head, it would have an eight-inch root. So in one piece, this size. For this reason, we now think tooth fairies were much larger back then. And this, the claw of the Giganotosaurus. Everyone say Giganotosaurus. Three big claws on each arm. A T-Rex only had two. His claws were half that size, and his arm might have only been nine inches long on a 40-foot animal. And we were puzzled by those tiny little arms. But now we think we know why. But I need a very brave volunteer. I need a very, I need you, miss, in the pink. Yes. Perfect. Come on over here. Can you stand right there? That'd be fantastic. What's your name? Skyling. Skyling? Very nice. Skyling. You and I are going to pretend we're T Rexes, so we have to put our elbows where our belts go, like I'm doing. Two claws. Their arms were so short. They could not feed themselves. They could not scratch themselves. If you think about it, it's any two people going to a Philadelphia Flyers game. Well, with other information we just found, it seems like some of them may have hunted together. Skyly, are we ready to go hunting? Just do like me. Here we go. Skyly? was known as the happy hunter. Now, turns out this guy. One of the first things that we notice about dinosaurs, they are in balance. If you look at a long neck dinosaur, it almost always has a long tail. It is in balance, but it is rare, if ever, to see a tail of a dinosaur going through tracks. They don't think they drag their, tra uh, their tails. We think a T-Rex would bend forward, had its tail up off the ground, and in that position could run, maybe 25 miles an hour. So if you went looking for a real live T-Rex, what is the most important thing to bring? Glass. A slower friend. A slower friend. <laughs> Over time, tail stops growing, head gets bigger, computer model shows one inch bigger on the tail, it'll drag. Mother Nature says no, keeps it short and lifted so it's quick. The head bigger and bigger to eat more and more, but now there's too much weight in the front. That's why these arms get shorter and shorter and shorter. Kylie and I are now going to do a visual experiment for you. Kylie, I'm going to pick you up and put you on that table. Is that okay? Right. You, is it all right? Okay. All right. I know, it's like when I asked my wife to marry me. It's kind of like the same thing. Yeah. Lean back. Lean back. Here we go. One, two, three. All right. Can you bend your legs? Keep them bent. Don't straighten them. Your head's going to hang off the end just a little bit. Are you good? You're good. Okay. Keep them across your arms. Cross your arms. Now, I want everyone here to notice that Kylie is balanced between those two chairs because she's a human being. But imagine that this part that I've covered up is the tail of a T-Rex. That tail would balance the head. The head would balance the tail. Stay very still, Kylie. And that is why the T-Rex can live on just two legs. Whoa! Kylie, I pulled the other chair out. It is so cool. You should see it. The head. <laughs> balances the tail, and to keep it in balance, those arms get shorter and shorter. Let's give Kylie a big round of applause. I'm gonna pick that one, one, two, and three. Oh, how would we say your name? Skyly, Skyly, this, Skyly, fantastic. I'm just happy she didn't get yours, okay. Now, this is gonna be the exciting part of the day. If I was going to do a dinosaur show, I should show some dinosaurs. Please? We have limited space here, so I'm going to ask you a couple things. Guys on the floor, slowly back up as far as you can. Watch each other's fingers, because we're going to try to bring out three different dinosaurs. Um, and don't touch them until afterwards. And I promise, you know, at the end of the show, we'll be able to touch them. This first one, well, I think you guys will know what it is. This is a mom or a dad. This is an adult. Can you guys sit down? You'll be able to see him. What is it? This is a Stegosaurus. What was that? No, he, he, he won't. The next one might. <laughs> 
to do it outside. This sounds like I'm talking to my wife. Okay. Oh my God. This is my stegosaurus. Stegosaurus means roofed lizard. Does that look like a roof? No. No, unless you live at an international house of pancakes. But the reason we call it roofed lizard, when we found it, they put the plates on it like this at first. They then realize later that they go upright down the back. We also know that blood goes through there, a lot of blood. And so if he wants to get sun on there, the blood can pick up the heat and send it through his body. So it's kind of like solar heating for the stegosaurus. Now you can't see, or maybe you guys can over here, but you guys can't. His hips are seven times bigger than his shoulders. A personal nightmare of mine. And the reason for that, Dinosaurs started as two-legged animals and evolved into the four-legged shape. That's why their shoulders are almost always smaller than their hips. This is a mom or a dad. It's an adult of its type. Um, I'm gonna try to take him down. Yes, Michael? Oh, a deer host? Well, Santa and Grandma got run over by a reindeer, and before people were on her. No, so I uh, was just to try to make him not look so balloony. Um, I stenciled my dinosaurs. It's a weekend I won't be getting back. Now, I'm going to take this guy down. That looks just... His nose! His nose! <laughs> I'm going to let this guy go down. I'm going to bring out another one over here. That was an adult. I need you guys to move back now. Thank you very much. This guy... is not a T-Rex. This guy is eight years old. guys can live to be 200 years old. Um, we do have a herd of plant-eating dinosaurs in Canada, about 5,000 of them. We have another 5,000 in America that all died at the same time. We think they died when the world's biggest volcano exploded. We call that volcano Yellowstone National Park, and it does explode every 600,000 years. Does anybody know the last time it exploded? How many years ago that was? It was, was, was 600,000 years ago. So plan your summer trips accordingly. Now, this guy is eight years old. You know, I'm going to have an adult. Is there an adult who'd like to be a balloon wrangler for two seconds? Nobody, nobody's like, oh, come on, yes, like, let's give her a big round of applause. The red head with the snazzy. If you just would keep his head between those two legs, it's very good to push it. Just you know, put one hand right there. You see it? It's very easy to move around. All right, good. I am going to bring out um, one more dinosaur. This dinosaur had a lot of controversy this year. It's not. This is not a T-Rex.
about Triceratops right now is that, guys, remember what I said? Try not to touch it right now. Oh no, look at him. I know, I don't have my ability. Now, um, kids, I love it. So, this guy, we used to think was an adult Triceratops, but there was another dinosaur called Torosaurus, and it's got a much bigger head. We now realize adult Triceratops are a Torosaurus, so we got rid of the Torosaurus name. Um, every Triceratops that you can think of in your head that you've ever seen, that's a kid Triceratops. When they become adults, they have wild crests on top of their heads. Now, the guy who found the first one who figured that one out, his name was Paul Serena. Everybody say Paul Serena. Paul Serena! When Paul went to elementary school, he had a really hard time. Lots of phone calls going home to mom and dad. When he got to high school, he needed a tutor almost every single day. When he graduated college, nobody gave him a job. So Paul went out by himself, started to find two and three brand new dinosaurs every single year. And right now he runs the University of Chicago Paleontology Division. So if there's anybody here thinking about becoming a scientist, maybe you're great at taking tests, maybe you have to learn how to read, what a great place to do it here at this beautiful library. Whatever it is, don't quit. When people ask you what you want to be, take a finger, point it at yourself and say, I want to be a scientist. Let's try it. I want to be a scientist. After five of your friends ask you what you want to be, that means you pointed five fingers. Five fingers make a hand, and a hand is what you deserve when you become one. So let's give it up for ourselves right now. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, I'm looking at the clock and it's time to go. I really, really hope you enjoyed the show. So now it's your turn to go out and read some books, maybe get outside, take another look, and maybe you will find a real big guy, you know, one that will reach way up to the sky. Thank you guys very much for coming out. Thank you, Herman. Thank you.